Hey everybody, I'm here with my friend Holly Bertone and we're talking about her upcoming event starting Monday, which is called Gratitude Builds Fortitude. I love the topic, especially related to autoimmune disease, but Holly, I think we could really say for any chronic illness or even, you know, chronically hard time in life as we were just talking yes. about, we need to build these skills, right? Of like, how are we approaching this hard time? So can you just kind of get, get the ball rolling and tell us about you and what you're up to lately? Oh, yeah, sure. So uh, again, my name is Holly Bertone, and I'm the founder of PinkFortitude.com and Fortitude.academy. And I'm actually a breast cancer and an autoimmune slash Hashimoto's slash chronic fatigue survivor. So I have been through the ringer a few times and um, I help women view their chronic illness as a gift and unwrap resilience using a proven method to build fortitude with gratitude and gratitude building fortitude is my jam. Awesome. Yeah. You were saying you recently kind of made it into your specialty, but I've definitely been hearing you talk about it ever since Yes, I've known you. Um, yes. <laughs> and you re recently sent me like a really lovely little book about gratitude practices. So Maybe before we look over your event, maybe you can just talk more about like this kind of the science of gratitude and how we can incorporate it into our lives more. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I I think a lot of people underestimate the power of gratitude. It's just kind of one of those, it just, it sneaks up on you and just like hits you in such a powerful way that you don't know it's there in a good way. And I think also our, our brains are wired, like primitively wired to focus on the negative you know, to like to, to, to scan for the, the threats and, and the fear that's out there. Um, you know, so gratitude is a way to bring that positivity to our lives. And, you know, a lot of people think it's very woo woo and kind of squishy and fluffy. Um, and, you know, and, and the mindset itself can be, but it is scientifically backed. I mean, there are numerous, numerous scientific studies about the power of gratitude, um, the one that I always like to share is from Psychology Today, which shares the top, um, basically the top seven um, benefits of okay. gratitude. Um, they, it opens the door to relationships, improves uh, physical health, increases um, empathy and reduces aggression, uh, helps you to sleep better. <laughs> um, it helps with uh, psychological health. And then the last, which is actually my favorite, it increases mental strength and that is your fortitude. So it is actually scientifically proven that gratitude builds fortitude. And, you know, I think having, you know, those of us who have some type of, you know, chronic illness or health challenge, like life happens all around you, regardless, like you, you're not, you, you don't get to be born, have a life and die without some kind of challenge in the middle. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, so, so, and I think especially the events of this past year and a half have really exasperated, I always get stuck on the word, <laughs> exasperated <laughs> that. And, you know, and the power of gratitude is, is free and it's simple, you know, and, and it is actually scientifically proven that gratitude and negative emotions cannot take up the same space in your mind. So even just for that brief moment in time when your focus is on gratitude, that's all of where your focus is. And, you know, it's just putting it out there. It's just, it's like telling the universe more, more gratitude, please. So, you know, it's, it's, you put more, more gratitude thing, out so that, speak. yeah, okay. the more it comes back. Okay. Yeah. I know there's this, I think it's called cognitive bias. Like say you're thinking of buying a red car, you see them everywhere. Yep. So I think it's kind of similar, right? It's like yeah. you're thinking about your blessings and you start to like see it more. You're like, Oh, that person held the door open for me or that person, you know, called to check on me. And then, yeah, you start instead of like hovering in all the things that are going wrong, start to notice. Yeah. And actually, right. Yeah, I was gonna say, I actually, my um, my 14 year old truck was involved in a hit and run. It was parked, fortunately, so no one was hurt. But um, the the car that I got was a Kona, which is tiny. I didn't even know they existed, right? And, you know, I was talking to the dealer and they're like, oh, we've got a smaller one if that's what you're looking for. It's called a Kona. I'm like, a what? 
<laughs> so I didn't even know the car existed and now I see it everywhere. So yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> 100% true. Yeah. So you said it makes for better relationships, better health yes. and then, and then fortitude. Do you think the relationships are partly just the way you're presenting yourself in the world when you're being I think grateful? So. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, and, you know, you know, so oftentimes, you know, it's easy to be critical Right. So instead of showing up with being, you know, critical or in that kind of negative space um, to show up in that in that place of gratitude and it just it just really shifts. OK. And then it sounds like actually physically for your health, you said that like we're kind of wired to see, look at the negative. It's probably kind of for survival. Right. Um, right. So I'd imagine this is more like the opposite of fight or flight. It's like rest and digest. Yes. rest and be grateful and you're just in a better space where I know healing happens in that parasympathetic space uh and then lots of disease can happen right in that chronic stress yes. state right yeah and it's you know it's kind of taking that that storm like going from you know that that stress state and that you know anxiety and that fear and that stress and the storm that builds and you know the disease that can build within that storm and, you know, really shifting from, you know, the, the sympathetic to the parasympathetic and, you know, instead of that storm, it's just going in a different direction and it's, you know, it's all good. It's, you know, in a place of, of gratitude and, you know, reducing that, that stress um, in your body and, and, you know, calming your mind down and, um, you know, helping to really just shift, um, you know, shift that your nervous system really. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's hear a little bit more about your story. You shared a bit, but I mean, did you, would you say you're already practicing gratitude before you were diagnosed with breast cancer? I don't even know the timeline of how everything went for you. Yeah, no. In fact, um, I was, you know, I always like to share the day before breast cancer. Cause that was kind of like, that was my life. And I thought my life was perfect. I was a, um, chief of staff at a very high level management position, at one of those three letter government agencies they make TV shows about. Um, and I was racing Xterra triathlons, which are the off-road triathlons. I was racing mountain bikes and rock climbing and taking Muay Thai wow. boxing lessons and traveling all over, drinking margaritas with my friends. Like I just thought that that was my perfect life. And uh, on my 39th birthday was when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And, um, you know, it was, it was obviously a big storm, you know, initially, but then, you know, we kind of started to joke. I was like, you know, most girls get like earrings or flowers. I got breast cancer, you know, breast Aww. cancer was my gift. And it was like funny, not funny, but I started joking about it so much that breast cancer was my gift. Right. And I was like, oh, it actually kind of was. And I didn't know what that meant. Right. But something shifted, right, from being like a joke, like, ha ha, I got breast cancer on my birthday, what a gift, right, to, oh, you know what, this is a gift, but I didn't know what that meant, right? So it and, just sort of was like an inkling, you didn't think, oh, yeah. this is helping me be more present or whatever, right. you didn't quite know yet, okay. Not yet, I just kind of okay. knew that something, like, I, I had this piece, this overwhelming piece that this was for a greater purpose, and I just didn't know what that meant at the time. Um, but I went through surgery, chemo, radiation. So um, all three. And then um, after treatment was over, I just kept getting sicker and sicker. And my doctors were like, oh, you've been through a lot. You know, it's going to take your body time to heal. And I'm like, yeah, like a year ago, I was racing Xterra triathlons. Do you know how hard they are? Like, I can't get out of bed. Something's not right. So um, finally, a year later, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which oh. is the autoimmune component of uh, hypothyroidism. Uh, weight gain and fatigue are two best symptoms <laughs> of go team. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, I will say like I'm Hashimoto's as well. And I was tired, but I never gained weight. I was never constipated. So I will say if you're listening, it can be atypical for sure. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I'd love to hear like connection between cancer treatment or cancer and, and Hashimoto's, but for mold, Hashimoto's is going to often come up. So mm. sometimes it's good to even look, look at what's happening if, yeah. uh, you know, you don't feel like you totally fit the picture. So yeah, I, sorry yeah. to interrupt, but oh, um, no, no, that's, that's fine. And, yeah. and the fatigue that I got wasn't just, oh, I'm tired. Like this was like bone crushing, sleeping 10 hours, still waking up feeling like I hadn't, you know, slept. I was partying all night and 
Yeah. So just that's bone always a, yeah. <laughs> I always say that like bone deep fatigue is yes. when it's really like at that kind of cellular metabolic level. Yeah. Okay. So you were going through all this, probably pretty bummed out that you still were sick after you, all the treatment you went through. Yeah. Was there gratitude coming in at this point? Not, yet. <laughs> not really. Not much. Yeah. No, not oh, much. That's a rough. It's really rough. <laughs> it really it was, is. It was. Um, so I struggled for quite a while. And in, I mean, and this was, I was diagnosed, uh, I'm trying to think. It was 10 years ago. It was 10 years ago, or actually 11 years ago. I'm sorry that I was diagnosed. And um, in 2017, I kind of hit rock bottom for the third time was when, um, I was the, the fatigue had actually gotten so bad that, um, the government agency that I worked at, um, illegally rescinded my leave and I was actually forced to resign. So that was when I hit rock bottom for the third time. And I think it was that, that point, not, not then, right. But in that recovery period after that, was really when I just started diving into kind of a gratitude practice because I just, you know, rock bottom for the third time, just it hit, it hit even harder, you know, um, and just trying to get my health back on track, trying to get, you know, myself back on track and take care of my family and, um, you know, just regroup at life. And, and you, did um, you not have a diagnosis yet of Hashimoto's or did you Oh, no, it? no. I had, I'd already, yeah, I was diagnosed in 2010 and 11 with breast cancer okay. and Hashimoto's. Yeah. Oh, so this was, quickly. yeah. Okay. So this was 2000. So I had been, you know, kind of battling this and getting by. Um, but yeah, it was about 2017 when I just kind of hit rock bottom for that third time and really started to pick myself up. And I was like, you know what? I need to start dealing with this mindset thing. <laughs> You know, like I cut the gluten out of my diet. I cut the dairy out of my diet. I started removing toxins. Like I did all of the things and I still just couldn't get out of the funk. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should start working on this mindset thing. (laughs) Yeah. Game changer. Game changer. That's awesome. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think it's talked about nearly enough. And I don't think I mentioned to you, I'm writing this book on mold and I have mindset in there a lot or just skills and kind of resources because you feel so overwhelmed and alone. And I think it's a huge, huge part of the journey. And people kind of want to grasp on to like the physical kind of things they can do, like what doctor they can see or yeah, like what foods to eliminate and what supplements to take. And those things have value, but sometimes it's just like, you don't see yourself kind of spinning and chasing all these solutions and not really like slowing down to just like listen to your body and take care of yourself. Uh, yeah. And it sounds like it, it took you a, a few hard knocks to kind of think about self-care in a different way, but you were coming from such an environment of like, go, go, go. And like, yeah. you know, c- climb the career ladder. So I don't think there's much awareness in that space no. about, yeah, like, take a rest, like cook yourself some real, yeah. Right. You're yeah. just not. So, and, and you know, what's interesting is, and you know, and yeah, gratitude, it's not an on off switch. I mean, you can't just be like, Oh, I'm grateful. And you're great. I mean, you know what I mean? Like it, it, your, your brain recognizes it, but it takes a while for it to just become, it kind of goes from what you do to who you are, if that makes sense. Yeah. And you know, at one point it was, you know, waking up in that state of extreme fatigue, just waking up with, you know, fatigue and overwhelm and anxiety and fear. And how am I going to make it through the day? And, you know, now to be in that place of waking up just with a heart full of gratitude with, you know, a song in my heart and love in my heart and just waking up and like, you know what, it doesn't matter how I feel or what's going on or what's not going on. Like, you know, I've got this right. The, you know, the universe has my back. I've got this like gratitude is, is who I am. It's what I do. And, you know, everything is going to happen for a a greater purpose and a greater reason. Mm. Yeah. I like what you said earlier too, that, you know, we're not going to go from birth to death with like no incidents. Like we're going to keep 
having stuff um and sort of I put this in the intro of my mold book it's like well once I went through mold then I went through a divorce like you can't unfortunately control it all and it, it you got to kind of be like how can I apply this I think for my own self I still tend to see these things as negative and that's what I'm trying to reframe it's like you said life keeps happening and instead of being like well this is not the way it was supposed to go just be like life happens for a reason and yeah I love your attitude like something good is going to come out of it and I can like just handle whatever is thrown at me and that that whole attitude is so much more like soothing like you said like it's this that parasympathetic like hey I'm I'm relaxed about all of this I think in our culture we're almost taught to be relaxed about none of it right anymore like everything we're allowed to be stressed out about you know the school pickup line we can be stressed out about like everything <laughs> that, that is a little stressful sometimes. oh my goodness are you kidding me with bus shortages now yeah oh my, I didn't know there were bus my, shortages oh yeah my 18 well there's well bus they have enough buses they don't have enough bus drivers yeah no my 18 year old can't he doesn't doesn't have his driver's license yet and school is kind of two it, it's three miles away he could walk if he wanted to I waited in that line for one day and I'm like, nope, you can find your way. You're 18 years old. You can find <laughs> out how to get, get a home. bike. Yeah, those we're done. Be stressful. Those can be yeah. legit stressful. It's called boundaries. It's yeah, called and I boundaries. Think, <laughs> I actually love that. I think you brought up a great thing with COVID too. It's like none of us expected. And then it's like, then you, the unexpected too, like not enough bus drivers. There's so many things and we all are adapting can we all just like embrace it and a lot of people did learn to have gratitude for their homes and their families and stuff through COVID so and it's been it's been I mean you know I think the challenges that already are happening in life I think this past year and a half between you know between COVID and then just all the politics and everyone having to take a side and it just I think there's so much just fear and anxiety and divide just globally right now that it's hard not to feel it, you know, and, yeah. and gratitude just, you know, really just helps to, you know, even on those hard days, right. When, when you don't feel like you want to be grateful for anything, it's still just having that kind of inner peace and that inner gratitude just really helps to lift you up even just a little bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have two more questions I want to ask yes. you and then we can go look at your event. Yes. So when you started to shift your mindset, I'm curious what kind of changes you were able to make or in, in your physical world? Yeah. So, um, you know, I kind of started and it sounds so cliche, but I started with just the traditional, you know, writing down what I'm grateful for at the beginning of the day and the end of the day. It's, you got to start somewhere. Right. And that's just, it's a great place to start. It it's is kind still of, really helpful. Yeah. It's very helpful. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, and, and, you know, like I said, it's just, it's really shifted. You know, I can tell from the um what do you call it like the the sympathetic to the parasympathetic like i even when stuff is going on i don't feel that stress does that make sense like it just it's 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 there but it doesn't overwhelm me it doesn't overtake my life um you know That's for awesome. example when my when my mother passed i was already knee deep in a gratitude practice and you know, I, I didn't feel like I wanted to be grateful and that was okay. I mean, you don't always have to be grateful. You're allowed to feel those, um, those negative emotions, the grief and the anger and the, you know, whatever else is going on, but just, you know, having that, what's the word, is it the arrow in your quiver, the tool in your tool bag, whatever the, you know, <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah I think it's a tool. Like it's a tool <laughs> in your toolkit, you know, and and you have that, and you know, just being able to, you know, take that, you know, that adversity, and and to you know to take her passing and be in a place of gratitude for her life and for everything that she taught me and for being able to take her life mantra called fortitude and, you know, build it into this place where I get to share how gratitude builds fortitude with the world. And, you know, and that really just shifted, you know, it, it helped me through that grief process of, um, you know, I mean, obviously very, you know, lots of tears and lots of mourning, but, 
you know, that the, that level of gratitude just really helped me kind of rise above. And, you know, and I think that's the most profound shift is, you know, and, and I think also you talked about physical, um, the gratitude for self and some of those, and I don't want to call them self-destructive behaviors per se, but yeah, maybe I didn't eat so well, or maybe I didn't do this, or maybe I didn't do that. Right. And just that, that gratitude to self being like making better choices, if that makes sense. And I think every choice you make helps move that needle in your health in one direction or the other. Okay. So you're saying gratitude for yourself helps you make better choices or just be more, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, Just to be more mindful of what I'm doing and be more mindful of those choices. And yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, yeah. So you give one example about the list. Um, Are there any other kind of little tools or tips or triggers you want to share for how people can be grateful like more often? Oh yeah. So there's a couple different things. Um, One of my friends talks about like she put a rock in her pocket. So every time, you know, she touched the the rock or the pebble or whatever, she think of something she's grateful for. Um, there's gratitude games like it, you know, at the, at the dinner table, if you can go around the table and just, you know, everyone share what they're grateful for. Um, you know, you go on a road trip and you can like say, okay, A to Z, we're going to think of everything we're grateful oh, for. Oh, interesting. And, you know, just different ways to, you know, set a timer on your phone, just, you know, every hour, once an hour, you know, maybe do a breath break, um, do a stretch break, you know, think about, you know, write down what you're grateful for. And the other thing too, um, you know, and these are just, you know, little ways to get started. Um, but I think kind of one of the bigger ways when things start to shift is being able to take an event and you can even think about something in the past that you don't have an emotional attachment to anymore and think about that event and say, you know, in, in, in terms of a negative connotation, right? So normally like a bad event would happen. You think, oh, I, you know, I didn't like this event or whatever because of, um, but to, to twist it to the positive. So what were the lessons that I learned, right? How am I a better person because of this? You know, what, um, you know, what were some of the blessings that came into my life because of this? Um, and to be able to start twisting and turning those negatives into the positives so that, you know, in the present and in the future, when they, when they happen, cause you know, things are going to happen big or small and being able to say, okay, what are the lessons that I learned? What, you know, what am I grateful about this experience? How can, you know, how has this made me a better person? What, you know, what are the different things that I can, you know, kind of work on and look at and, um, you know, just really being aware and present of that on a daily basis. Uh, That's a great, you know, that's a great thing to, to think about. And I kind of feel like there's in the moment gratitude of just little things, especially like you're going through the thick of, a diagnosis and treatment or moving because of mold, it could be pretty overwhelming. I like how you said, you know, honor your own hard feelings too, but there could be little things you notice like that people did for you or, or whatever. And sometimes it may take a little perspective to time. So I guess I'm trying to say to see like, oh, there are some good things that, that came out of this tragedy for me so that's really lovely okay I'm gonna screen share your event oh here. awesome where is it oh here we go oh that was good I just took a sip of water and hit my bookcase and I'm glad it didn't shatter that would have been a little awkward <laughs> yeah a little see moment hold me on Oh, I wanted to share, I've been listening to this book about, I think it's called How to Be Happy and Single. And she talks about how when we're dating, we're like, oh, we want to like find the person and have the life and do this. And she's like, well, what if you think about your life more in terms of, um, of your values mm-hmm. and showing up with, with your own values, like for yourself and your loved ones. And even like you go on a date and maybe it's not the greatest match, but you value listening. So you're going to really just listen and like get to know a person or whatever. I thought that was really beautiful because we can't control like all the incidents, but we can control how we want to show up. And one way could be uh, in gratitude 
Yeah. yeah, certainly it feels better than <laughs> the opposite, right? Okay, I think I got oh, it here. Wow, awesome. Yeah, yeah, and I'll share the link on, on Facebook too and on okay. YouTube. Um, yeah. Well, I'll scroll up later, but these are some of your speakers. I love Debbie. She's so yes. phenomenal. Um, certainly you do have some betrayal while going through a health journey as well, I'm sure. Do you want to share about any of these other speakers? I definitely don't know all of them. So um, it's 30, so it's actually 31 women. So we have 30 speakers in the one uh, yoga session. And um, it ended up, it wasn't necessarily supposed to be an all woman speaker panel. It just kind of ended up that way. And it's just got a really cool vibe. So um, the guys are totally welcome too. So, um, but you know, it's it's really designed for autoimmune and chronic illness. But there's so many topics that are just so they're going to be so helpful and so inspiring, regardless of what challenge you're going through. Um, but these women, sh like they showed up with their A game. I mean, just sharing their their struggles and how they really came out on the other side using you know the power of gratitude to build the grit and the resilience and the fortitude and um you know you talked about divorce we had some of the women go through divorce and um we had um actually several women experience some pretty profound and traumatic um deaths to individuals very close to them uh one woman actually went against her culture and her religion and her faith to find healing. She was that desperate. And, um, you know, so just some really powerful stories and it's free. It's free. It starts I love Monday it starts Monday and it's totally yeah. free. I don't know a lot of these people, so I should sign up and turn, yeah. tune into some of these. Let me go up to the top here. Uh, so this is what the page looks like. Uh, Holly's really into pink. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, pink fortitude, you know, it's a thing. <laughs> My room when I was a little girl was like, and this was in the seventies, it was like that seventies pink, orange, and yellow. Oh so. <laughs> yeah. That's a fun, but a little bit overwhelming color combination. Yeah. So yeah. you just click to join. And then Holly was saying that she's already unlocked the talks, right? So you can. Yeah. Oh, not right the in. talks yet. So oh, you can, um, so the summit's on Kajabi and then you'll have the link. So when you, you click on the link to join, um, so the summit's on the Kajabi platform. So you actually have to log in, which is super simple, but I know it's kind of new and different for some people. Oh, gotcha. So, okay. um, so this weekend, so the interviews don't start on Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time. The interviews begin. Um, so there will be six interviews a day for five days. And um, the so this weekend, what's open is there's a welcome video, there's a how to navigate the summit video, um, and then you can, there's bingo and a giveaway and a dance party and all kinds of fun stuff. So, awesome. Okay, so, yeah, it's, like so free it's just like event. to get used to the, yeah, get used to the portal, figure out, you know, your way around so that, yeah, Monday morning, first thing, since there's so many speakers, um, you know, first thing Monday morning, you can just jump right in and start watching. Yeah, and if you've never kind of tuned into an event like this, you can just kind of like listen on your commute or listen in the, you know, in the background while you're, you know, when you're on a work meeting. <laughs> no, whatever you want, whatever you want, it's up to you. Uh, yeah, you can just kind of squeeze it in and you don't have to watch all of them. You can just kind of um, focus on the ones uh, you want and get to know yeah. Holly better and some of her principles. It's probably an area of our lives we all could use, you know, I'm paying attention to so thank you so much holly for yeah, bringing this to the world we really appreciate it thank you so much yeah and i do have the link under facebook i'll have it under youtube uh yeah we wish you all the best with all of it thank you thanks everybody